All right. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, getting started with uh, Tina. It's really, it's, it's really easy. The first thing you do is you go to tina.io, the website, and if you scroll down a little, there's a command down here. Anyone do JavaScript development? A lot of people. So you're very familiar with NPX. Cool. So I don't need to tell you that you click copy, you go across to your terminal, and you press paste, and you get a lovely experience to get started. So you can start off with your package manager of choice. You give your project a name. I'm just going to call mine the default. And then there's a bunch of templates to get you started out of the box. So it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, what the hell do I do? We've got a whole bunch of starters here. There's ones with Tailwind, Hugo, Remix, even Docusaurus. I'm not going to run that off because anyone who's done NPM install before knows you download the internet. And we're on NBN. So I've got one that we've set up previously. And I'm just running a, doc, uh, just a, a documentation site to get you started. I'll go down in the terminal in VS Code and just write yarn dev. It's pretty quick. It's, um, it's gone so quick you, you didn't even see it. So what did it do? Well, it started a dev server and it went through the files and it indexed them. It's then shown up with a few URLs about the different things that Tina exposes. I'll go, go into them in, into it in a sec. And uh, we've got a URL to, uh, to run with. I've got it here. I'll just hit refresh. Bang. We've got something loaded and running on, uh, on a local port. Now, this is a fairly simple documentation site, but I just wanted to show you how, how it worked and how all the stuff is being stored in Markdown and how, the, how great the experience is. So I've got here uh, introduction as a title. There's some content. And if I flick back to VS Code, and I go down, I've got a docs folder here. Inside docs, there's an introduction.mdx. Trust me if you're in the back, it's there. I'll open that up. And you can see that there's some front matter at the top. If you're not familiar with front matter, it's a way to store some key value pair information inside Markdown. It's not part of your document, but um, it can be pulled out as an object. So we've got the introduction as a title, that's cool. A section here, overview, and if I flick back well, there's an overview section right here. And we've got the content. It's plain text. It's easy to read, just like Adam showed you before. What I can do is on, on the site is just change the URL to slash admin. And this loads up Tina CMS. So it's shipped as uh, static files next to, your, next to your documentation. So you, you, have, you have the power. And um, I've got live editing features. So I've got the title here. And just watch this area because it's going to change. As acquired Tina, and I can't spell. So I've just typed that out. We've got live editing happening here. This whole section here is your site loaded in a preview mode in an iframe. So I could go in, I could even resize it. And um, you can see there's some responsive CSS happening as I resize it. So you get this live editing experience, which is really good. So when you um, make a change, it's really what you see is what you get. I'm going to press save at the bottom, document saved, and I'll flick back to VS Code, and we can see it's edited the markdown file straight away. This is, this is a bit of magic. Now, this isn't just any, any old markdown. This is MDX. So I can put components in there. So. If I'm having uh, some documentation for an application, you most probably want to have some sections with some like information callouts and maybe a YouTube video or something like that so you can see how to use it. So I'll go in here, I'll click embed, and I can put in a callout, and bang, it's dropped in a note with some default inf information. I can click on the ellipsis. Is it still ellipsis because it's vertical? A vertical ellipsis, I'll click edit. There's some dropdowns being exposed here, so I can change what's, what's there. This is actually editing the props going into the components. And if I go back, I could even drop in and embed a video player. And it's dropped in a YouTube uh, straight away. I'll click Save, and we'll have a look at and see what that, what that uh, change, how that changes our markdown. We'll go back to VS Code, and we can see there's a call out there. Yes, it's HTML, uh, well, it's JSX, but it's very readable. You can see the text, text is text. 
I can see it's a callout component. It stands out because it's the only element there. If I see the video player, I could see the URL being passed into there. If I need to work out what it is, I could command click on it and, and it opens in YouTube. This is really, it's a, it's a really rich editing experience. The other thing I can do is uh, in Tina CMS, I click on the hamburger. I can see the different collections that are available. So you can organize your, your documents in, in different ways. Under documentation, I can go across create new. I've got the same editing experience. It's not, uh, I don't get a live preview because there's no page to actually render yet. But once I um, add in some content, like, you know, llamas are awesome. I'll put it into uh, a different section about animals. And I'll just fire up some lorem ipsum. Paste that in, just so we have some content on screen. You can see at the bottom, it's, uh, it's inferred a file name from my title because I've set it up that way. I'll click save, documents created. We can see it straight away there. I'll flick back to VS Code and now there's a, a llamas are awesome file and it looks just, it's formatted just like the rest of our files. So we get some consistency about these, uh, on these markdown files, which you don't usually get. If I go back to the root of the site, we can now see on the side, there's an animal section with llamas are ops, awesome. And if I click on it, there's my content. Now, these are files going into the repo next to your, next to your code. So you can stage them, commit them. Hopefully you're given a nice commit message and you, you're able to track the changes over time really nicely. So that's the, the beauty of using Tina. You know, you get this great editing experience and um, it, for your documentation sites and it all gets stored in Git. But there's a bit more on top of that. So this is even part of our open source, uh, Tina CMS is open source by the way, and part of that is uh, we look at your content and we spin up a database of, of that content. So we index it all, which you saw in, when it starts up. But we also expose a GraphQL endpoint. So let's have a quick look at that. I'll go to admin and we've got GraphQL. So hash GraphQL. So it's, it's in there. I've opened it a few times, but um, I can write a query inside here. So I can write some GraphQL. I can look at the docs that are there and I want to grab a specific doc. So I'll use the, the relative path. And I think from memory, it was introduction dot MDX. And I can pull out properties out of there. So I could grab the title. And if I press play, you can see the return value. It includes the title being pulled out of the, out of the front matter. Now, if I really wanted to be fancy, I could pull out the body. And it doesn't pull it out as text. It pulls it out as an abstract syntax tree, so an AST. The beauty of this is it doesn't just work for HTML. You can pull this out, and you've got an object representation of what would be rendered, and you can render it in like a React Native or whatever, however you need to. And um, one of our big clients, Unity, actually use this in the Unity editor. So when they need to get documentation that's context specific, they make a GraphQL call, grab the documentation, and they can put it in the IDE straight away. Who thinks that's cool? <laughs> Pretty much everyone, awesome. So that's our data layer. Now, you can do this, and um, how, does, how does GraphQL know where to pull this stuff out? Well, there's a config file. I'll show you the config file quickly. So there's a .tina directory where you store everything on how you configure Tina. And inside there, there's a config.js. Now, this is a job, just a plain JavaScript file, but it exposes a, a, few, a few things. There's a schema that has a set of collections. I showed you that documentation collection before, and that's how I knew it was called documentation. It's got a path in there, so it knows where to find the docs. And then a bunch of fields. So you can see there's the title, the intro paragraph, which section it was in, and this is configuring the CMS. What do you want it to display and how do you want to display it? If you want, needed some validation on there, like, hey, this field's required, there's a property for you. On that callout, we've got the configuration here, and you can see there's options on uh, the, the type of the callout. So that's how it knew it was meant to be a dropdown. We had the video player and it showed a video by default. So on the video player configuration, you can see on, there's a default item 
And this object is essentially the, the default props. So when you drop that uh, component in, what do you want to set it as default? So it works out of the box. You can configure this all here. It's just JavaScript. It's nice and easy. So that's a little bit of how blocks are wired up. You can build uh, whatever you like. There's, they're just React components, and uh, you wire it up in this config.js. Now, I've gone ahead and, um, and taken this uh, and deployed it to Vercel. You can self-host if you want to. Uh, there is an option for that. It's, it's, it is open source. But I've deployed it to Vercel, and, um, and that's loading up. There you go. And I've wired it up to Tina Cloud because I wanted to show you one of my favorite features of Tina Cloud. I can go into the admin to load up Tina CMS, even though it's online, that still works. Now, I've configured uh, the, the repo on here to say that my main branch is protected. I want a pull request. Now, if I go in, I may not be a technical person. Uh, I may not know about pull requests. So I just want to make a change. I'll go in and say, uh, what is a PR? And I'll press save. Straight away, it comes up saying, hey, look, this branch is protected. You got to create a branch. It's going to name a branch and prefix it with Tina slash. So we know it's come from Tina. So it's nicely organized. Like if you did a feature branch, you'd have feature slash on your branch name. Uh, I'll call it update title. And I'll click that create branch and save. Now, Tina, CM, Tina Cloud is going in. It's created a new branch for me. It's starting to index the content online. And um, in a second, it's going to create a pull request and then take me back to my content. So straight away, we're trying to follow all the great you know, branching practices and, and following pull requests. So if I'm making a change, someone else can check it before we merge it in. So it's redirected me. We can see my content changes there. We can see at the top, there's an update title. If I click on that, we can see all the different branch lists. And I'll go view in GitHub. That'll load it up here. So we can see it's created a draft PR with my content change. And if I hover down over here, you can see there's my face next to a llama. So it's, it's, it's co-authored with me. So straight away, I can look at that. If that was someone else's commit or if someone else is looking at it, hey, Matt used Tina CMS to make this change. So I know who made the change and what, did, what the change was because there's a PR and what did they use. The other thing that's really cool is um, you've got a preview link up here. So this is something configurable. Um, I know in the PR, Vercel is going to drop in the, the preview branch URL, but we're putting it in the UI as well because you may not want to go to that PR. If I click on that, um, if it's still building, most probably, yeah, it's still building, but Vercel's building it up. We know what the, the URL is going to be, so it's, it's available. So someone can check it, have a look at it, see what it's going to look like before they hit approve. So um, you can do more than just documentation sites with Tina CMS. You can do marketing sites as well. So like Adam showed before, uh, we do have, so I'll load up. This is, this is production, so um, I'm not going to make a change. But uh, this is the SSW website loaded in Tina. And uh, the reason I want to show you, because it's a little bit different when you're doing marketing sites to documentation sites, hopefully you can see the little blue boxes that are showing up everywhere. I can, instead of drilling down in, into the uh, UI in Tina CMS and trying to find out, hey, I want to edit this web to Tina. How do I, where is that? I can just click on it and straight away, it highlights the text that I'm going to change. And I can make the update straight away, hit save, away I go. If I wanted to uh, move things around, I can, these boxes are all separate components. I can drag and drop. And just watch um, the red Tina CMS, that'll move straight away. So it's, it's really live, rich editing. You can see the carousel moving along. It's pretty cool. So there you go. I've shown you how uh, Tina CMS and Tina Cloud make it really easy to edit your contents, make it really easy to uh, keep track of the changes. What changed, who changed it, what did they use? I mean. So to, to give you a bit of a background, uh, a few years ago, um, we were trying to update our website and um, I, I, uh, Adam had in his mind that it was going to be one, one thing. And then I said, no, 
look at Tina CMS. This is this is going to be big, and uh, I kind of staked my career on it. And am I still? I still have a job. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this this is uh, freaking awesome, and um, we absolutely love it. Thanks.